Hey everyone, welcome to uh, another awesome edition of Panos Live. This is Mel Coleman again here, uh, the digital marketing strategist for Panos. And today we're gonna talk about data. How exciting, right? Data, yes, I know, there's a lot of it and a lot of us don't even know where to begin or what we should be doing. Um, and we really tend to fall into one of two categories. And that's either wanting all of the data, regardless, and just really wanting as much as we can get our hands on. And the other is not having any data and not knowing where to begin. Um, and that's okay. You know, we, we tend to fall into one of the two, and I, I think that's pretty typical. So before we really kind of dive in today to determine what we should be doing and what it should all look like, um, let's just take a minute for me to say that your data is going to be very specific to you. All of the data metrics and determining what you should be looking at and why, it's gonna be very specific to what your organization is trying to accomplish. Uh, and, and that's typical. You know, your market, your audience, what you offer are all very unique to your institution. Now that being said, uh, there are some key terms that we can look at for things that you should really kind of be mindful of as you're going through these. Um, and before we even get started, the very first thing that we're going to, to talk about is nothing to do with data, but everything to do with understanding basic marketing. Apologies for shaking a little bit today, but I fixed my signs. Paid versus organic. Yeah, huge, right? So the easiest way to remember this is organic, no money. This is just people coming to your website. And paid, that means, yeah, you paid. You wanted them to come to your site, and that's usually through an advertising channel. So uh, looking at advertising, first off, and the really the data that most people tend to get pretty caught up in are impressions. This is a really confusing term because people see, you know, 250,000 impressions and get really excited, and then the following month it drops to, you know, 200,000 and they're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And really impressions is the softest metric we use. That's the one that's saying, okay, 200,000 times your ad appeared on somebody's screen. And so that's great if you're looking for brand awareness and brand awareness is just that. It's just you trying to get in front of as many people as possible. But for most of what we're doing, especially with our clients, they want a bit more than that. Brand awareness is really hard when you're trying to measure ROI which is something that we know all CFOs love. And so in order to do that, we need to look a bit beyond impressions. Don't get me wrong, it's really important to make sure your ad is serving, but I think we can do a bit better. The next one is click-through rate. Yeah, that's click-through rate, CTR for short. And this very simply is the number of clicks on your ad divided by the number of impressions. This is a great metric because there are benchmarks associated with it, which is rare, um, for a lot of the things that we're talking about in terms of benchmarks. But there are benchmarks based on platform and ad type. Um, we've even done some based on product type and uh, certain markets. So, you know, there are ways for you to gauge how well you're doing. And really, click-through rate is to help you determine how your ad is resonating. So are you reaching the right people? And is your message really driving them to take an action? Which again, is critical. The final one for paid, which is my favorite, are conversions. These are key actions. So what's an example of this? Well, if you were to run a mortgage campaign and you have apply online on your landing page, that is your key action. That's your conversion. And really, we call this a conversion or the key action because it's the closest to ROI. It's the closest to adding to your bottom line. And this is what we want. This is what your CFO wants. This is what's going to help you get more campaign dollars. This is what's really going to make you and your organization thrive. So this is why that's our favorite. But know that again, there's, there's no benchmarks for that. It's really about you comparing your performance against yourself. This is very much of a PR mindset. You know, you really have to make sure that you're doing well against yourself, setting your own personal records every time you go to market. Now, with all of this data, know that you have to have more than one key data point to determine success. And that's gonna look very different depending on what the goals are of your campaign. So just know that even with these three data points, you should be using all of them and make sure that you can see any trends that are happening uh, because really trends is the other key part of this. So that's super high level of paid. We're really short on time. So, you know, I'm not trying to take up the whole day here, um, but now let's talk about organic. And so again, organic, that's just what's happening on your website. You know, that's just your everyday kind of stuff. 
Um, it's where you know people are linked from the, your signature to go back there or lenders are sending you there, what have you. Um, this is just what's, what's happening, how people find you. And there are a lot of key data points here, key data terms rather, and these apply to everybody. Regardless of what your goals are, these are going to be the key ones. The first two are users and sessions. Sessions is anytime a user visits your site, they start a session. And that session can consist of them looking at several different pages or one page or just clicking to log in, but that's a session and that's really important to determine. And the number of users, it's anytime somebody visits your site. Uh, and like that's each individual user. And there's a whole breakout of, of data beyond this, but those are two really high level ones to look at. Your next one is average session duration. So when people visit your site as a whole, how long are they spending on there? Are they spending a minute, five minutes, 10 seconds? That gives you a sense of whether or not you have enough content to keep them there and if they're engaged. This is also a little bit of a challenge for financial institutions since a lot of our users tend to just go right to log in and that's fine, we want them to do that, but there are ways for us to measure beyond that. Next up, and this is important for looking at your content overall, but that is uh, average time on page. So that's looking at the individual pages on your site and saying, okay, how does mortgage perform or how are my blogs doing? These are all really helpful, again, to determine what your content is because your number one driver of all business, whether you want it to be or not, is going to be organic search, SEO. And the only way to continue to improve that is by continuing to improve your content. The last two, uh, average page load speed or average time, um, average page speed. And that is, again, a user experience thing. You should, all of your pages should be loading in 2.5 seconds or less. And that's according to Google. <laughs> so unfortunately, I don't set that. That is according to Google and more changes are gonna be coming with that soon. Uh, so be on the lookout for that, but the faster the better. And finally, I have another fun drawing for this one, um, is uh, bounce rate. And this is a confusing one for a lot of people. So here's my fun little graph. Yep, bounce rate. Think of a bouncing ball. And so bounce rate refers to when somebody lands on your page or on your website, anywhere on your website, and just leaves without taking an action. You really don't want that to be above 70% if you can help it. Sometimes it's a little bit higher and we can determine that, but um, it's just something to kind of keep an eye on. If it's too high, there's an issue. If it's too low, there's also an issue. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could talk about this for days and I feel like that that's my common phrase, but data is so important at empowering you and your business to determine what success looks like, again, for you, because you're very specific. Your market is very unique. So don't try to keep up with the Joneses. There's no, there's no benefit to wondering how you're doing in comparison to the bank down the street. The best thing you can do is compare you to yourself. And that's by determining what your goals are and what your performance looks like and where you want to be. So that's, that's it for today's Panos Live on uh, understanding the importance of data. Uh, and make sure that you stay tuned next week, Tuesday at 2, for another Panos Live. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.